with anything on Mirage. It's a BO1 opener up against one of the best squads in the play-in, and Cloud9 have to prove it here and now. Yeah, I was able to uh, speak with Cloud9 a little bit during the media day. The, the, the vibes seem very good. And so, you know, I'm, I'm hoping that we're going to get to see that showing off here in their opening game versus the Rebels. Already, it looked like there was a bit of an issue with that smoke getting trapped behind the dumpster out in spawn. So it slows them down somewhat. This aggression from Rebels is actually really nice. SNX now knows that... The entirety of T-Spawn's empty. It's got to be the B-play, so seeing a couple of reactions to try and deal with that now. Olimp, one kill from him to open up the pistol. Electronic has provided a bit of pressure out through the connector. Cloud9 still have their hearts set on the B-side, but this is where SNX embarked on this flank a long time ago. Can now look to... Oh! Nice. He will wrestle with the gun and deal with that first man. Another player out on short. He's left all on Aye. an island here. They're going to try and leave, but that's where Casey's got them pinned in. Uh, had them pinned in in the past tense. Now, SNX left high and dry. He pushed all the way through A, confirmed it wasn't the A play, only for the bomb to end up that way. Nice little haiku there at the end, and or a poem, rather. SNX no kit. And Electronic has the perfect position to peak late as he hears him running down middle. That will be the pistol round for C9. Uh, confidence start, a confidence start rather for the CIS squad. For Rebels, you know, unknown to many of you, I'm sure. Uh, ex Paloma, of course, the core of a squad that made it here to Katowice play in last year under Permitter um, via winning the Polish qualification. And I think that's very cool to see them back again with a different squad, but with the same at least three of uh, Casey, Olymp and SNX. Of course, in the three years prior that we've seen a Polish team make it to the play and they've never won a series. Twice with a Krakow, once Permitter, and now Rebels. The best we saw was uh, with a Krakow in 2021, winning a map. I think it was against Maus at the time, but never winning a series. Can Rebels be the squad to break that? If there were ever a time, it would be a new uh, game in MR12 in a BO1, but maybe not against Cloud9. That feels unrealistic. Rebels going to play their heart out here. And I think it's actually very cool to see them in this tournament, to see this invite, you know, with partner leagues uh, being abolished, moving into the next year, and with local hero invite or qualification spots maybe changing or, or being removed. This might be the last chance we see uh, for a team like this getting ooh, this kind of opportunity. Ooh, they're going into the stack. I wasn't that excited about this round, and I'm actually not that excited about this round, <laughs> as everyone will fall here. A damn near flawless one. If they can just deal with SNX, yeah. it will be. You kill four players in a bomb site, you're ready for the fifth mm. every time. I like that little mid site smoke lobbed in over the top as well. Cut down the sight lines, made that boost completely useless. They bypass it with ease. And so now Rebels, after taking the full eco, going to get a chance to play with the rifles early on here. This is going to be one of the better chances they've got of getting a, a round on the board early. As there's still these MAC-10s in play, you're going to expect to see them up at the forefront. Knowing that the MAC-10s are going to be held forward makes you buy the head armor, so a little less util in an already cash-strapped round. It's a fight for mid here. Guns are blazing and traded into the 3v3. But that push out through the connector, they hear the drop out from Palace. That's Electronic dead. Perfecto here all alone as Boomich goes back to pick up the bomb. Oh, they doubt it though, because Perfecto just goes quiet, doesn't swing. They full rotate out the site. They think that's a fake play. And I like how they're playing together here and just grouping, but that was just based off of swinging and not seeing a player. Of course, Cloud9 don't know that it's a full rotation out of the bomb site. But Rebels, there's not really any avenues to get info here. They've just got to believe in their stack, and they'll find out the hard way, likely as that bomb gets planted. Still a minute on the clock. Cloud9 could be anywhere. Rebels re-aggress to fight for middle together. But you would like to think Cloud9 aren't going to plant for the connector. What's open, they wonder. Smoke comes down. But Con still wide open. Perfecto looking to take a fight. He sees at least two players there looking for the third. They can go back for a default bomb plant. But right now, the fights are going to come to them before they can. Yeah, that smoking Con isn't going to hold them back. Onto the AK. Perfecto really has to do it all here. And as he's getting whittled down, he's getting spammed. Boomich can't move. They're trying to bait oh. him in. 
but dead immediately, and Perfecto Not is yet. run down. That is a very well played round from the Rebels as they group up, they up and leave the A site. They know that, you know, if you're Cloud9, you're not expecting A to suddenly be empty. Noise had to be made, info had to be transferred to the Rebels as they move in that little roaming pack of three. And then they kind of just keep the pressure applied. There's no element there of giving too much room to Perfecto, right? Yeah. Letting him isolate any sort of fight. They hound him down. That's one of the hardest bomb sites in the game to get a bomb plant in when you have no info and no util. Like you, do, you don't know what to plant for, right? They could be jungle, they could be CT, they could be con, and it could be cat. There's so many options open for bomb plant denial that C9 get a little bit too scared, a bit flustered, and Rebels exploit that very well. Four buys on both teams. Flay's got his scout out. Hobbit does come through under, and Casey's up in ladder. So potentially the first fight of the round. Hobbit's in no hurry to check out this position. Looking over the smoke on Cat. Meanwhile, Axos spams Olymp out. It looks like he was playing on the edge of his own smoke in the B apartments. But Cloud9 don't jump the gun off of that kill. They're still very spread out in this round, waiting to see if Rebels go for yet another information play. Yeah, and they have to, right? They're a man down here. They've got to try and get something out of it. And so they'll aggro over to, over towards ramp. Group with two, they're at least getting the info that there's no one here on the ramp side. But that doesn't mean it's not going to be an A play with mid taken and electronic lurking over in Palace. The, the kind of stage is set for this to follow on up through the connector and move into the A site, which Rebels have just vacated with this double push. They will eventually decide to bring Kisarek back. He's now responsible for dealing with Electronic. Big Papa in the palace. What a flank. And he should have this dead to rights. So Electronic's not even considering it. The penny might drop eventually, right? You realize that no, no one is visible out on A, so they might have taken room elsewhere. And Electronic no is just a little too smart for this. Deals with that double push nice and easy and trying to leave. Casey's evil whittled down as well. It's a gun and beer apartments. Maybe Flay can go for it at the end, but that's so unfortunate to think they not only have uh, the ramp player flanking, that's why Electronic goes back to check, right? Because you saw him molly ramp. He was aware that A player wasn't in position. They got the site for free from Con. So, you know, you assume he's on ramp, but the check for the big flank, that's a, a great play. Gets both players on the backstab. Cloud9 find their 3-1 lead. Flay won't find the upgrade, but still, Rebels save a couple of guns. This is, oh yeah, that's a nice cheeky play. Would have worked better in Go. A little harder to make a one way in this one. What the hell was Go, mate? <laughs> I only know CS2. Yeah. The original. New generation. Back in my day. <laughs> All right, what do they want to do with this rifle? They've left it over towards B on a bit of a push, and the rest of the gang with the pistols grouping outside of Palace. They might look to get... Oh, oh timing on awkward. that. Electronic right as he pulls the util, they move in, and this is all thanks to the fact that Casey clears out the B apartments. He puts the info down the line. It is the A play, but that leaves the M4 high and dry. A long way away in the round. He's going to commit to the big flank as a result. Sight's been taken. Rebels have had to concede it. They don't have the weaponry to fight back for this one. And so now their hopes, everything, it's all riding on this flank from Casey. He's here very, very quickly. That push through the apartments came right at the start of the round. So it might be a little quicker than Cloud9 are considering, oh. but the missed shots, that's brutal. Yeah. The whole round was riding on his shoulders and that weight is too much to bear. That's more of a standard round I was expecting to see C9 pull in this game, right? Five players, oh, <laughs> five players coming out of Palace and Ramp, grouped with a couple of bits of util, just confident in their ability to trade out those kills. Obviously way more efficient against pistols. Rebels have only one rifle to really stop that, with the exception of the scout back in spawn. So we'll see how much default in Cloud9 really want to do versus more standard rounds like that where they can just use their manpower and rely on their individuals. In the meantime, Rebels do have an AWP. The first one coming through, Flay makes the hop into middle. A 
Boomic is going to force him to make his decision, and out he goes. The safer of two options, certainly. Cloud9 used three flashes to take mid, and that is theirs for now. Oh, I think even when you see the flash come out there, you, that makes you feel pretty good about the pressure you've applied over towards B. You know the money wasn't great. They didn't have the molly to lob in towards apartments to try to slow you down. And so you know the Rebels aren't really working with a lot in this round. You've already put a lot of pressure here, taking a good chunk of the util out. The rest of Cloud9 outside of A, looking like they want to lob over some util, maybe try to redirect some of this attention. Yeah, let's see if Rebels fall for this, right? It's just a, a double smoke A and, and three players walking into that B bomb site late, it seems. Boomish checks flank, but he should be committing with his squad into the B bomb site. And right now there's three CTs here. The Rebels buckle under the pressure or do they believe in their setup? A boost allows Casey to roam. But this is very late in the round. C9, 40 seconds left. No kills yet. They come up cat. It's not much of a fake. Blaze scoped in. Should be able to get the drop on this first man, but just sails on past, does that shot. And so now with Catwalk taking all the makings of this B split, Cloud9 right where they want to be. Rebels start to pad out the site. That orb will find success the second time around. What about the third time? Is it the charm for Flay on this AWP? His teammates still boosted up in the site here. Delivers one. Does Olymp. Time is running out. Time is getting away Done. from Cloud9, and they won't be able to win this. It's just perfecto. He's left combat saving inside of the site. And so Rebels do piece that one together in time. They get nice. all their ducks in a row, or whatever the expression is. Yeah. They pull them around towards B, and they're there to stop Cloud9 in their tracks. Yeah, it never ended up being an A-fake. They just used those uh, ramp players to throw connector smokes to get Cloud9 up catwalk. But like you said, a little too slow, a little too late. Three players up cat, but only one really commits before the apartments player. And Flay just finds the crucial opening kill to stop him. Sure, they lose the AWP at the end. That combat save for Perfecto is actually valuable. Puts Rebels back to rifles, but hey, they've already got two. They're cooking. A execute coming through for Cloud9. One player in the site ahead of the util, and he gets blinded by his teammate's flash. That is a disaster. Flay's going to try his hand at it instead. After killing his friend, he needs to respond. Oh, yeah, you just cleared triple, so you weren't expecting Flay there. In that exact same position, Boomich trying to phase the... Oh, nice! But the jump up for Casey can't control the M4 for more than one. Olimp on the wraparound is deleted. Wow. Boomich on a tear right now. Two kills from the man out towards the spawn. But that bomb's still not planted. Every single time they attempted it, they get prodded by the Rebels. Leaves it all on Kisarek. That bomb now going down. And they've seen him. They've got that info. The molly... Well, make life a little awkward here, forcing a swing out of Electronic, and now it's left to Boomich. Low HP. They know about him. They know that he was over towards CT. Kisarek, will he get in his head? It's where the bomb's planted for, so that. he just stares down range. It. The full 10-second commit. He's got and it. he get past five, Boomich thinks this is a fake. He doesn't buy it. He doesn't believe. <laughs> and so Kisarek, 10-second defuse, and Boomich never even gets a chance nice. to play the game. Can't move. I love you. That's so sick. That, like, the balls to make that play against someone like Boomich, obviously there's a lot of info there. You know, you, you've got to play a mind game. You know Boomich is low. He's probably not going to swing. Let's just gamble. Let's just hope. He's still got his crosshair in the right place to get off if Boomich comes for the fight. But, yeah, like you said, after, after five seconds, Boomich thinks that. So, you, know, you can argue that's the best play Boomich can make on four health. But that's exactly what Kisarek knows. He comes through with a 1v2, and Rebels are competing right now with Cloud9 at the start of Mirage. That's more than you could have asked for. Question is, can they keep it up? And how many years was it that you said that the, that the series hadn't been won here by the Polish squad? All three years we've had play-ins with, you know, invited teams, or sorry, qualified teams, mm. local heroes yeah. here at Katowice. And it was this very same squad last year who didn't get a map. Or very same core, rather. Yeah, so let's see then. Let's see if the times they are are changing after all. Their own piece of history looking to get etched out. It'd be very cool for Rebels to, you know, cause a commotion here, but I think it would speak more to the level of Cloud9 than Rebels. 
in a sense. You have certain expectations. MP5 SD. You never, you never really see it. It looks cool on the HUD. Very small. But it's a small gun. It's compact. It's about what you do with it, Harry. I don't know. The Mac 10 looks larger in comparison on the left side. Hey, man. That's how little it's used. Ooh, oh, it doesn't get anything done. Electronic, this is his palace, okay? He is the king right now. Not getting in or out. Once again, I mean, you, you've lost the man. You're either going to play off of kind of intuition here and just take a bit of a gamble, hope that you gamble right, or you've got to make a play for the info. Three strong over towards B are the Rebels right now. If they don't get contact soon, you would love to see maybe a bit of a peek down in towards the apartments just to confirm that it's not this B play. In case he did just give it a jump check, might even look to make the play up because in the meantime, Cloud9 have got their eyes set on this A site and it's never going to happen for Rebels. They oh. don't have more bodies here. And in fact, they lose the only one they've got. So that will be the save. The gamble stack over towards B, dodged by Cloud9. And a save called from the Rebels. Electronic is hitting heads right now. And that's, you know, that's what we wanted from this guy, especially giving up the in-game leader role. Took him a while, but realizing that he plays best when someone else is taking the reins and some fantastic shooting in these last couple of rounds. And now Cloud9 are surrounding Rebels. Yeah, this hunt is big, man. Like, you know, they, they know. They've pieced together the only place this save uh -oh. can be taking place. Oh, I love that. swing. But they only get out with the one gun, and not even oh. that's a guarantee. Axel with the final nail in the coffin there. A big hunt. All three weapons are removed. That leaves Rebels with nothing. They essentially have to force here. They've got to just throw some pistols armor into the mix. That round, losing those three guns, that's going to hit like three for the Rebels. Yeah. I do love watching the team play of Rebels, though, they are on the same page, like making that swing. I think they realize that Cloud9 are coming. They probably don't know there's four players hunting those guns, but, you know, if they sit still there, they're going to get run at anyway. They may as well take the fight together. We're seeing a lot of these you know, mid-round moves where they group up and they roam. That's a good sign. Yeah, I think that's such a, a massive swing round. And to go down in that fashion, that's restored a lot of a lot of confidence in Cloud9's kind of state in this game right now. It was a little back and forth to open, but those rounds really hurt. They're the ones that you kind of beat yourself up over for losing, or at least losing the attempt at the save and, and losing the round so convincingly. Now he rightly mentioned, you know, Moon, uh, Moonwalk having a fantastic game to actually qualify them here. But keep in mind that this, this core, this squad beat, you know, nine, the current Ents core to actually qualify for this event. So. Definitely got some experience as a squad together and already got a couple of names in the bag. Can they find any more heads? These eagles go looking, but Hobbit plays the fade. Oh, that's a nice shot. Casey with a crucial kill. Keeps things even. Cloud9 come up. Cat and Flay could be in the right place yet again with the sniper. It's a little scary how like spread out Cloud9 are with 30 seconds left. They're going back to A. But this is heard by SNX. Electronic, been good at catching the palace timings, but not oh. in this round. He gets deleted, shot in the back of the head. Uh -oh. Now they know about one man cut loose over in the palace. They've spotted Casey in the sight. They will deal with him, but Flay's now raining down shots from the spawn. This scout Dude. doing its work. A lot of damage dealt down range. Oh SNX no! SNX with the miss spray. Please have something connect for the guy here. He's looking for it and he will get one. But now he's got to finish the job. Now he's tasked with the 1v2 to close it on this force by for the Rebels. Creeping up, first man found, SNX. Just Boomich left to beat. No. the clutch here earlier, and it's another one going against him. The Rebels do it on the force by, and a collective sigh of relief is breathed from the Rebels. They came in with that force, desperate times, calling for desperate measures. And they are able to lock it in They've thanks got... to that flank from SNX through Palace. They've got to be confident now. Like they are, they are winning rounds they should not be winning. SNX, who's had his misses, like you said, with four kills, another 1v2 clutch coming through for Rebels. This is getting scary already. 
Flay with some crucial scout tags as well. These low health Cloud9 players can't close rounds. Five to four. It's Cloud9 on attack. Even their money drawn into question here. Could get a couple of rifles, two at most, if you want to buy AKs. Rebels making a run for it here in a BO1 opener. Yeah, and, and, you know, that, that force by win is just huge. You know, it, it's crazy how much that changes the way that this first half was feeling. If you end up falling short there, especially after getting some opportunities like the flag from SNX, if, if that like whiff spray over at ramp kind of followed through and he, and he couldn't deliver in the 1v2, this would shape up very, very quickly to be a dominant half for Cloud9. And now all of that is thrown up in the air. There's a real chance. There's a real kind of essence of hope over this for the Rebels all of a sudden. I like the buy for Cloud9. Triple Mac 10 or Double Mac 10, they're just going to go fast and grouped. But once again, we have Rebels with numbers in the right place. Yeah, I think they probably feel like in these last few rounds, they've been very spread out. They haven't been able to react, and so they want to try just a, a grouped push into the A site. But it doesn't go well out of the gate. They get one kill, but it's traded back twofold from the Rebels. And look at the minimap, man. Everyone's here for the CTs. It's no mystery to them what the idea was in this round. Oh, oh Alabama, oh, Axel pinned in, and Electronic finished off. The A play repelled, and with that, the money breaks for Cloud9. This is where Rebels are about to take the lead. Are you seeing this? Have I you heard have, about this? I have heard about this. I am watching it, Harry. This is not what we had in the uh, the script today, safe to say. I love that change for Rebels. Last time they were in a similar position, Cloud9 went cold. They stopped peeking. They hide in Sandwich and Tetris, and Rebels rotate out, and they go, they go stack B. This time, Rebels push back in, they guarantee the Cloud9 are not here, or they are, and they get all the kills. So, Rebels causing a ruckus, and Cloud9 put to pistols. Going to crawl out under. Axel waits oh. upper. Yeah, any any hope of this round getting exciting should be should be done for with Kisarek's position over in mid. If they yeah. if they try to do anything out through lower tunnels, he's going to wreck them. And then they're set up too strong over here towards B, just playing like this 2-1-2 two, two, two between the A and B site. Yeah, you don't want Kisarek to a full flank from top mid. He has got the perfect position, as you say, and he's checking on timings as well. So he's even covered. He's, he's read this very well. Easy pickings, two kills, doesn't have to force it. Doesn't want to give them a gun. All right, that's the beauty of this position. It's like, yeah, you, you just don't have to fight anymore. Oh, my double dink. Oh, oh, he's on for the ace. Get them all. Psych. Not today, but a round is a round, and Rebels take it with five alive. And that's absolutely money. huge, because think about it, man. Like, when they won that force buy, the story was, oh, the economy's just wrecked them, you know? Like, they're in a really bad way all of a sudden. But then they win the force, they keep capitalize on, uh, capitalizing on it, they shut down that attempt at the fast A play with the MAC-10s, they take now this eco round flawlessly, they do it with five alive, suddenly they're in a great place for the remainder of this half. And it's Cloud9 that you're looking to, having to offer up answers. Last chance saloon here on the T side. Looking to level the playing field at the end of the half. Flay makes his move, and it's pretty smooth up to Catwalk with the orb. Cloud9 go for a B hit with one lurk out mid. That's Boomage selling it. Electronic, crucial opener. There's no one at the B bomb site right now. Cloud9 cannot afford to delay. Flay turns back for his shot, but he gets caught by Boomage on the lurk. Lovely little split here for Cloud9, and they are tearing Rebels back. A more standard round. These punchy XX have done Cloud9 well in this T side, but it is coming to a close. And we'll, we'll need to see if they can close the post. Kesarek out through the market already, has slipped into this smoke. Hobbit is aware of it and should have this one dead to right. So it's only SNX. He's often been on these big lurks, but they've heard him over it short and everyone's ready to deal with him. They'll finish it nice and cleanly. So they don't get it done with much. Couple of smokes, couple of flashes and an up-tempo B play at least seals the deal on an even scoreline heading into this second half.
Cloud9 clamber over their T-side of Mirage and barely scrape six here in this single BO1 opening match for IEM Katowice 2024. We're in the play-in and Rebels are already putting up more stock than we expected. But the question is, were they just one half heroes or can they keep it going on the more difficult side of the T? Got a pistol round coming up to the side, bit of util and a B-pop. Yeah, that first half of Cloud9, they're able to scrape by with what you might say is kind of the, the bare minimum of what you were expecting is uh, the 6 4 him here. And so now for Rebels, they've got that soft white underbelly exposed. Can they capitalize on it? Because this doesn't happen every day for the Rebels. Ooh. They run down Electronic over at the bench. They find themselves this man advantage to open up the pistol. Perfecto getting cheeky around a smoke. Sure, it's being considered. Clay oh. pushing through, learns about him the hard way though. And it takes Olymp getting that trade to keep the numbers even still. 2v2, they've whittled Axile down over at short. It looked like they wanted to try and put pressure on him there, but that's where Boomich has complicated matters. Casey, all lies on him in this 1v2. Back of the site, first shot connects. It's just Axile left to beat, and he will deliver. Casey stands tall to find that pistol round for the Rebels. And he keeps them in good tidings here as they retake that lead once again. Cloud9 left on the back foot, staring down the barrel of an eco round here. Just having a stew in the fact that the Rebels will keep this gap widening. They are frothing at the mouth, the Rebels, right now, and taking every fight they can. They are swinging in pairs. This is a very enjoyable game to watch from the Rebels. And that pistol round is the cherry on top. An A attack, but as long as it's timed fine with the split from connector, this stack shouldn't be a big problem, you'd like to think. However, they seem raring to Famous go. Famous last words there, Hugo. It should, well, you know, let's see if the con players can get this backstab in. That's integral. Famous last words here, Hugo. This is unlosable for Rebels. Oh, it's a dink on a Casey to open up. The hero that last round, but there we go. Everything else comes into place for the Rebels. Locking out Hello. the USPs as <laughs> fucked <laughs> out, even the cat. <laughs> Everyone gets a fist bump. Oscar Gurov. It's happening, or is it? Well, how, I mean, how? here's what I'll say, right? Like, Rebels probably felt very, very good with how that first half pans out, especially because it was all kind of hanging in the balance, swinging around like a pendulum, right? 
It, it was it was all dicey when they won that force by suddenly their hopes. Their dreams, they all came to the forefront of their minds, but now they have to capitalize. That was the big challenge, we said, coming into the second half. They've won the pistol. They stick the landing on the conversion. If they can nail this one, if they can nail this, you better believe they are believing, Hugo. Believing twice. Sounded awkward. I believe it. Jump spotting B is Hobbit. We've got a full exec on B, but this is a fake. This is a complete fake out right now. Breaking smoke, throwing in this execute. Look at the rotation it's drawn. Perfecto's out of the bomb site. Bomb is coming out of ramp. They're walking a palace smoke. Rebels are playing like they have nothing to lose right now. They delay it a second. Cloud9 realize this is too good to be true. And they do find that crucial kill in middle. Kisarek coming in delayed. They've just cleared this angle, but he's going to get dinged from Catwalk. What a trade. Impressive that he even gets that. Casey spamming from afar, but the bomb gets dropped in the middle of the site, and there's no way out of this one. It's convoluted, but Cloud9 hold on. That was an attack on all fronts from Rebels. A BX egg coming out of under. If they did walk that palace smoke, that could have been a very, very good round for Rebels. Cloud9 crossfired at Connector. It's not pretty, but they'll take it. And that's a bit of a gut punch to Rebels, who now have nothing to show for their pistol round win. Two AKs max available if they buy, and they probably should with players on 1500. They have a bit of time to talk it over. You know, you, you would expect if you're Rebels here, you know that Cloud9 are not just going to roll over and give it to you. They were expecting fight. It comes a little bit earlier than maybe they would have liked to keep capitalizing on this hot start. But they've just got to keep themselves kind of mentally in this. You don't want the, the belief to turn to desperation and go sour quickly. Boomich mops up the pistols with a bit of support from Electronic. And so the game ties up at 8-8. Very interesting eco to take, right? Because you're just you're screwing SNX over, but you're doing it for the greater good. You're getting your buy round sooner. The force buy on paper is what I think a lot of teams would have gone for there. But a full eco gives everyone else what they want. It gives Flay the orb dropped over, and they have d very good util for a buy like this. So I love that call for rebels. You often see people just default into buying if a player can't afford. Electronic gets out the window, but his teammate falls in his stead. One kill back the other way to leave this even. Nades find good damage, but it's not without some punishment the other way. SNX getting away with a kill right before he's found is huge. They even sneak a man up through Con. Oof. Did Hobbit see that? He no. never reacted to it. And so no Olim in with the backstab. Oh, Olim, so you've got something. Oh, dear. Okay. He pick it up. He recovers Ow. it well. What? And now he's opened up the route to the A play. That bomb can go down. There's nothing really that Electronic can do about it from the spawn side. And even in spite of that, Flay held the angle for a good moment there, waiting to see if he was given anything. Cloud9, do they want to try and come through the murder hole? Do you want to try and rotate through something called the murder hole? <laughs> I don't think they do. And so they're just going to bow out of this round. They say, no, thank you. And so Rebels. Finger to the pulse, they're right back on it here. Yeah, that swing for Boomish does look a little silly when you watch it from Olim's perspective, especially when Cloud9 are about to throw a flash in window. But Boomish realizes, I'm going to get peaked from, from mid because they're in connector. I'm, I'm going to die anyway. I'd rather die peaking than being peaked, right? So it's a bit awkward. Olim makes it look very, very sexy, but Rebels, a great timing hit up connector. And after trading two for two in middle, you're winning. Nine, eight, literally, as Cloud9 now have another buy. Saves are, saves are actually very important. It gives them something to fall back on. Worst case scenario. And right now, that is the scenario we're in. Yeah, I mean, you know, it, it's a core that haven't, haven't found their winning ways in Katowice whenever they've been here. But they're on the precipice of that right now. They're, they're riding this high that their ambitions are actually very obtainable. And the round that really could decide it all is coming down the pipeline now. An investment in from Cloud9. And a chance to leap ahead in the money game right at the tail end of this matchup.
It is a huge opportunity. So for Rebels now, it's about keeping those nerves in check. Let's see if they can do it, shall we? What an opportunity, not just afforded, but taken by Rebels in this best of one to push Cloud9 to an elimination game up against BB. Uncalled for, but they're making it happen. Back to an A-side pop. Palace pop with three and the orb. Rebels are not afraid to play unorthodox. Electronic a great position. They're really trying to press this advantage while they got it right. Now's the time where wow. you can get away with stuff oh. like this. But Electronic fast down the ladder and support comes in from that AWP. Electronic will not let them through. Locks them down. Locks them out. And SNX in the blink of an eye is left as the last man standing. This round was a bit of a roller coaster for the Rebels and a very fast one at that. All aboard the Nemesis Inferno. SNX. They're wondering how it went wrong. They get the opening kill. All in path through ramp. For that brief yeah. one moment, it was like, yes, this is going to work. We've done it. We, we've actually got in. Yeah, you absolutely can't blame the palace swing through a smoke for Rebels. That was the call anyway. Olim does exactly what he needs to do. But because Cloud9 are double close A, and with a third player at the back as well, they are so well afforded to stop that play. And Electronic has been the shining star of this entire map for Cloud9. He was doing it on T side, and he comes up with a round winner on top of Balcony. Even the slide back down the ladder, finding Olimp as well. Beautiful stuff for Electronic. And Cloud9, they need that pep in their step. Uh, yeah, I mean, you know, for, for Cloud9, because I think it's been easy to home in on Rebels, getting excited there. But for Cloud9, you know, th this is like, this is exactly what you needed when you needed it from the man you want it from. Like, you know, Electronic's got to be the front man here. And he stays composed. He stays cool. He knows what's demanded of him in this position. You needed a round winner churned up from somebody. And Electronic is such a prime candidate for that. I love the Three way kills in the round. And it's enough to tie this game up and immediately kind of put that pressure back on the Rebels again, right? Because what you didn't want if you were Cloud9, coming into this as heavy favorites, the team that everyone's looking at to essentially have run away with this game. The thing that you don't want is to be like feeling like your back's against the wall, you're letting everyone down, it's getting out of your hand, you're playing on Rebels kind of time zone, you're playing on their say so. And so now you've reeled them in a little bit. You've broken the money. You're about to retake the lead, something that you haven't had in quite some time now. And so that's a real break point here in the second half. I like how they used that save even to just chat. SNX looking very vocal on the camera there. Rebels making sure they don't even need the tack timeout. They just chat it through. They let this AK lead out under. I'd like to see the pistol go first and just set them up for trades. Boost isn't a bad idea either. Trying to pick window. Perfecto coming through with an orb. First orb we've seen on Cloud9 CT side, and it's gone in an instant. Not ready for that cheeky play. Gonna put the rifle up in window as well. If if SNX can somehow yeah, deliver, done, yeah. if he can like deliver around oh. to them here with the hero AK. No. Oh. And he, and he has equipped his team and he's spreading the wealth out. They're not even looking. If they can make something of this round, suddenly Rebels are right oh. back in. That galvanizes the belief. That brings you into the game in a way that you didn't feel was possible just moments ago. And SNX toying with them, playing the trigger discipline. Wow, he he's doesn't just this. want one kill he's out so of this. He wants both. And he might just oh. get them. Shut out by Axel. An important trade over at this B site, but will he be able to stop the coming tide of Rebels? They're already out. SNX has done what he had to do in this round. Now it's down to the yeah. rest of them, and Flay is not going to miss this opportunity. It's done. Is it done? A Cloud9 saving. They run for the hills, and the Rebels do it with a hero AK. One gun and Glocks. One gun. And what a play. He is hes so confident to hunt that hard for two kills in the B site. How much do you really want out of that play? He wouldn't take his freebie on the backstab. He had to find Hobbit as well. And if you're going to take one of the two kills, it's definitely better to get the site player there. It allowed his teammates to flood in with that saved orb from window that they reset back into the B apartments. It even cuts off the first man in through market, forcing the save. 
What a beautiful play for SNX. We are seeing some heads up CS for Rebels. They are taking this opportunity and they are running with it. Like we said earlier, this would be the first time that the Polish qualified team has won a series at IEM Katowice playing. And it would be over Cloud9 to yeah. throw themselves into that upper bracket 1B03 away from a group stage appearance. I, I, you know, this is fantastic. I can't, it's the fashion that they've just done it in. Yeah. It's, it's SNX Some of having these the, the balls to go for the trigger discipline and really try to get maximum value out of that and open up the round for his team. But the hallmark of a great team of great players is that you don't crumble in a moment like this. So can Cloud9 keep their head on their shoulders and do what we expect of a roster of their pedigree? It doesn't look good. Well, the Quick not pick on. off of Electronic and Perfecto hits his, but he's got a full back. That's not on Electronic's shoulders anymore. Axile at least mopping up Casey over at Jungle. And so Cloud9, they compose themselves here, not rattled yet by the little lead that Rebels have amounted. Oh, great position. Yeah, this could be the bomb cut loose. Ooh. He won't commit to the fight just yet. It goes a little later and will still pick up the kill. Bomb now away from the Rebels and they are split up. They are worlds apart. Both player, single player in this game. Oh no. Hobbit, this is a little awkward. Just he started him go. running and so now they're, they're locked in this kind of duel. But Hobbit knows the longer he keeps him here, the more... Oh, oh no. God, he goes swinging wide. And now suddenly all in, in with the backstab, takes out another Perfecto with this AWP. Look oh, to be a saving this. grace. Oh. The mid shot and that lack of the oh, AWP oh, punishes oh, Cloud9. Perfecto oh, can't do it. it. Olimp with the backstab finds 11 for oh. the Rebels. And they now know that this game is in their hands. The money is gone for Cloud9. They're faced with a really awkward decision of the Cloud9 squad. They had all the advantages. They had everything going their way. This fight over in the apartments, they didn't realize it, but that is the fight that gives up the round. It lets Olim come in on this backstab. And he has his way with Cloud9. This is a disturbing way to lose the game. It feels like that round is is the kicker, that that round is the, the GG moment in and of itself, just in the way that Cloud9 use it. And with all the criticism of the lack of AWP player, uh, the lack of star orb on this star studded roster, well, what better way to accentuate it than a round like that? My goodness, Cloud9. This is, the Rebels have played some fantastic CS, but at a certain point, this is extremely disappointing to see from C9. Rounds falling in that fashion. We've had two full eco nearly wins for Rebels in this game, and they're gonna win this one just like that. They pop into their empty bomb site, they take space, and Cloud9, it was only a full eco, but it won't even be a worry. And so here they stand, just one round away from achieving that feat that they've been chasing for a good few years now. And it would be one tremendous feat indeed. The opener versus Cloud9. This was dubbed to be one of the more one-sided games today, 100%. And they might be about to knock them down to the lower bracket and progress on through the upper themselves. They are five kills away from that eventuality. And it isn't an eventuality if you were to ask the Rebels right now. They are feeling it. They are believing in this. They've had full faith in the individuals to pick it up when it matters. And they've had some heads up, just grouped Counter-Strike across the board here to salvage this second half. They are in the strangest quarry I've ever seen. They are getting blood out of every single stone on the site. Winning rounds that seem impossible to lose for Cloud9. Eco wins, backstabs, trigger disciplines, clutches out the wazoo. We've had multiple 1v2s. Sticking the bomb in the first half, 10 seconds. Rebels, three opportunities, one round. I say they're good for it. For Cloud9 now, it's like, you know, now it's like put up or shut up, right? They, they have to. They have to win at three in a row to claw this one into an overtime. They've got to be flawless. They can't be rattled by the fact that they were heavy favorites and this is getting away from them. 
They've got to compose themselves, but Another is it too far gone? A leg down mid from Perfecto. Not the killing blow, but at least forces a bit of respect out of them. Oh Axile knows that in these moments, plays have got to be made, so he tries to make one there, but it is punished. 4v4, Cloud9. They go even on this mid fight. And they're grouped up over towards A now that they've shut down this mid control. Numbers are good on site, but you know they're going to be scared of a late con lurker because it's been players shooting you in the back for a lot of this T side. So Electronic has to keep his eyes on middle. And this is the player that you want fighting in A right now because he has been the star of the show. There's a lot of resources used towards this mid position. A re-smoke comes in on ramp, but we've seen Rebels go through smokes without a care in the world. They have the time to wait it out. And so they shall. It was it was electronic in that round that, that looked like rebels were about to start you know really running away with this game who who delivered when Cloud9 demanded it who who kind of you know threw himself out into the lion's den and made it work and this one might be much the same his two teammates playing a little more aggro as he's left watching Con. Perfecto oh takes a swing, and that is a beautiful shot. Trying to make amends for that last round with the AWP. He's nabbed the advantage for Cloud9, and now the Org of Boomich locks down the CT side of it. Kisseret can't find a thing. Electronic pounces up and over, and that secures a lifeline for Cloud9. A very dangerous play made, right? Perfecto goes through the smoke when he hears the molly pop on bench. He walks through with an orb, taking damage, and he still gets, like you said, a beautiful flick. That's a lovely kill, but it's such high risk. You lose that, and Rebels have the sight. They have the advantage back, and they surely have the plant. Great org spray and CT spawn. But Rebels have money for days. They will be buying again. One down, two to go. Any further would have meant an orb pick. They bail from the top mid take. Flay was waiting. Will B be the breaking point here for the Rebels? They pull back out of the apartments, go back to T spawn. Once again, confident in their A execute, SNX. Looking like he was lining up a B smoke. You don't want to make the fake too obvious. Again, Cloud9 fighting for middle. Three players here. How will Boomich fare? This is really good timing. Uh, they, they couldn't just sit three players in, in mid forever, oh. right? Not with under a minute left. And so Electronic takes it upon himself to go and take the control. And with that, he also gets the open. And now he confirms it is not the mid play. Boomich falls as a route in towards the A site. Oh, smoke. Perfecto here with that AWP has freedom to peek up over the stairs. They're not going to jump the gun. They try to wait in group. Plays Orp rings out with a kill, tipping the scales in oh Rebels' my. favor. Is this their chance? The nade onto Perfecto looks to knock out another man. Electronic and Hobbit grouped back at the spawn. First have to get past Casey, and he will do so much damage. He's basically done it. Electronic, 12 HP, blind as a bat, can't do a thing. Half the time ticked off this bomb. No chance for Electronic, surely. And as he goes swinging here, no fights have to be given, no ground gained. He's locked out by the Rebels, who secured their opening round win in the Katowice play-in. The first time in four years of Polish qualification to the play of the Katowice, and the first series win over Cloud9 of all teams. And you can say nothing but it, it was well earned for Rebels. Some unbelievable clutches, some incredible backstabs, and what a T side to throw it on top.